Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to spend some time talking about the six most common or top causes of hyperthyroidism. Now I spent a lot of time talking about hypothyroidism, meaning low thyroid function, but today we're gonna to be talking about the opposite and that is hyperthyroidism, okay? So we're gonna be explaining what actually causes hyperthyroidism. We're gonna talk about the most common cause which are um, sort of naturally occurring causes inside of the body. Then we're also gonna talk about some causes that can occur um, due to things that you put into your body or things that you do, perhaps accidentally or maybe intentionally or otherwise. So this will make a lot of sense as we talk about it. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist and I specialize in helping people with thyroid problems, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight. Now, I spend a lot of time talking about hypothyroidism, meaning low thyroid function. Um, and one of the reasons is because there are far fewer people who have hyperthyroidism. So when you look at the numbers, there are only about one to 2% of the population, maybe three, maybe 4%, depending on which uh, study you're looking at, that have hyperthyroidism. And of those people who have hyperthyroidism, hardly any of them get missed, okay? Most people know when they're hyperthyroid, they go into the doctor, they get diagnosed fairly easily, and those people almost always, you know, with few exceptions, end up hypothyroidism. Okay, so they end up with hypothyroidism. So when I talk about hypothyroidism, it includes those people who had, who had hyperthyroidism, keyword being had hyperthyroidism, um, who now have hypothyroidism because their thyroid has either been removed um, or ablated with radioactive iodine because those are the two main treatments. So most of the information, by the way, just if you're listening to this and you have hyperthyroidism, if you ever hear me talking about hypothyroid supplements or anything that else, that also applies to you. Okay, but let's talk about some of the causes, at least the top causes of hyperthyroidism. Now, the most common cause is by far Graves' disease, and that is an autoimmune disease um, of your thyroid gland. Now, the opposite autoimmune disease, which causes hypothyroidism, is called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now, Graves' disease and Hashimoto's thyroiditis share a lot of similarities in terms of the underlying mechanisms. So if something is going to cause or has the potential to cause hyper, or high, um, sorry, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, it has the potential to also cause Graves' disease. So that includes things like uh, poor diet, um, Epstein-Barr viral infection, other infections, H. pylori, uh, chemical or he heavy metal um, exposure, and so on. So all of these things can trigger Graves' disease. And what happens is your immune system produces certain antibodies that trigger the release of thyroid hormone from the thyroid gland. So instead of doing the opposite in Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is not producing enough because your thyroid is damaged, this is like pressing the gas on your thyroid and just causing it to pump out tons and tons and tons of thyroid problem or thyroid hormone. Now, like I said, most treatments for that is to just remove the thyroid. I don't think that's a good treatment, but that's what most doctors do. So that is the most common cause of hyperthyroidism. But there are some other causes which we'll talk about here. Next up would be anything which causes thyroid gland inflammation. The uh, medical term for this is thyroiditis. Remember, itis meaning inflammation of whatever gland we're talking about or area that we're talking about in the body, in this case, the thyroid. So itis of the thyroid is thyroid inflammation. Now there are a lot, this is a more of like a waste basket, uh, waste basket term, which includes a lot of other terms as well, um, which cause this. So I included Hashimoto's thyroiditis in here as well. Remember, I said Hashimoto's causes low thyroid, and that is almost always true, but it can cause bouts of hyperthyroidism, meaning that your thyroid is temporarily too high for a short period of time. Now, I should have actually mentioned in the very beginning that all of these causes of hyperthyroidism vary in how long they actually last. Graves' disease usually doesn't go away. Thyroid disease or thyroiditis usually does go away, and I'll talk about some of these other things as we go. Um, but we should understand is Hashimoto's, while it may cause bouts of hyperthyroidism, does not cause sustained um, episodes of hyperthyroidism. You can also get periods of hyperthyroidism just because of um, in the postpartum phase or just because you were pregnant previously. That's called postpartum thyroiditis. You can have infections of the thyroid gland. That's called subacute thyroiditis. It can be viral, bacterial, even fungal as well. And there are a couple of other causes of, of um, thyroiditis or inflammation to the thyroid gland uh, that I haven't included here. But you should realize that pretty much any, any cause of inflammation can trigger the release of thyroid hormone because it's a sensitive uh, tissue, right? So if you damage it or push on it or actually... Uh, what, what's interesting, by the way, if you just push on your thyroid gland, it will secrete some thyroid hormone out. So you can cause temporary flushes of thyroid hormone in your body. Please do not do that, by the way, especially if you have thyroid problems. I'm just letting you know it is very sensitive. That's all I'm mentioning there. The next thing is that you can actually have what's called um, a hot nodule. So a ton of people, a ton of people have thyroid nodules in general, but most of these thyroid nodules, which are just little bumps, they're um, aberrant growth or uh, areas of uh, tissue growth inside your thyroid gland, which are usually non-functional. So if you have 
you know, your, your thyroid gland, which kind of looks like this, you might have one or two thyroid, gland, thyroid nodules here that vary in size, but they don't do anything. They're just sitting there and they're not doing anything. And a huge percentage of people have this, you know, something like 60% of people by the time they die will have one, two or more of these nodules sitting in their thyroid gland, not doing anything at all. Now, some nodules can uh, turn into cancer and some of them can actually turn into what's called a hot nodule, meaning they by themselves suddenly just turn on like a light switch and start producing thyroid hormone. Most of them are just, you know, jumbled, you know, group of cells which are really inactive and inert, but occasionally you can get a hot nodule which decides, for whatever reason, I'm just going to produce a ton of thyroid hormone and I'm going to ignore the messages that are coming to the rest of the thyroid gland. That is called a hot nodule. These typically do not go away. They're kind of like Graves' disease and usually you have to cut it out. So if you can imagine if you have the hot nodule over here, if you just X that part out, you leave half the, half the thyroid there that's functioning, the, the bad part is gone and now you have at least somewhat of a functioning thyroid gland. Occasionally these hot nodules um, can you know, spontaneously uh, resolve themselves. It doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. Um, so you should be aware of that. Now these three causes of hyperthyroidism are all related to things that you somewhat have control over meaning they're usually related to things you are putting inside of your body. So let's talk about these sort of in detail. Now, I would say these three up here never really get missed, right? Because these are things that if you experience the, the symptoms of hyperthyroidism, you're going into your doctor, your doctor is going to diagnose you fairly rapidly. It's hard to miss somebody who has a rapid heart rate, hair falling out, losing weight, having diarrhea, can't um, tolerate heat and so on. Those are classic signs of hyperthyroidism. They really don't get missed. But these are a little more sinister and they can somewhat go unmissed or you can have you know, a, a um, less intense version of these. So let's say that your thyroid is only five to 10% um, uh, increase as opposed to you know, 200% increase in, as the case would be in uh, Graves' disease. So if, let's just say some of these may cause only you know, a 10 to 20% increase in thyroid function and that will cause problems and that will cause symptoms, but it may not lead you into your doctor, which means that you could go on for a period of time having these issues. Now, one of these would be the use of thyroid medication usually, by the way, prescribed by a doctor, but some people, especially bodybuilders, will find um, illicit ways to obtain thyroid medication outside of a prescription and they'll use it to help with weight loss, all right? And other people probably do this as well. I just happen to know um, that some bodybuilders abuse T3 in that way. Now, it could be through a prescription though as well. Your doctor could just give you a bad dose. But guess what happens? If you take too much of thyroid hormone, you will become or potentially can become hyperthyroid, meaning you just have too much. Um, and that happens fairly common. Uh, when you look at the studies, there are people who go through periods of hyperthyroidism who are on thyroid medication. In fact, the last time I looked, I think it was about one third of people who take thyroid medication will at some point experience bouts or symptoms of hyperthyroidism just because you know thyroid hormone demands change over time. Uh, your doctor, your pharmacy may have given you the wrong bottle or the wrong dose or whatever. This stuff does happen, believe it or not. I've seen it happen personally many times. Um, so you may just be taking too much for a short period of time. The bottle may be incorrect, whatever. The dose you know, could be off by a zero or something. Some stuff like that does happen from time to time. But the good news is that resolves pretty easily just by dropping the dose. Okay, if you drop the dose, you drop your thyroid hormone, uh, the amount that's in your body, and the symptoms will subside fairly rapidly. Next would be from the use of iodine supplementation. This is rare, but it does happen rarely. There are a lot of people, especially out there in certain groups on the internet, who recommend very high doses of iodine. So this is dose dependent, okay? I just did a whole video talking about why iodine is safe. Now I'm talking to, you know, and adding it to this list of why it's potentially dangerous. It's not really dangerous. It's only potentially bad if you misuse it, okay? Now that's like anything in the world, right? Any good thing can become bad if you use too much of it. Iodine, in my opinion, is a great thing, but if you use too much of it, especially if you're using something like 100 to you know, 500 times the daily recommended dose, that's when you can get into trouble. And there are a lot of people who recommend doses this high, if not higher. Um, now some, anyway, I'm not even gonna get to that. That'll just cause confusion. But the idea that I need you to understand here is that iodine supplementation can, can potentially cause issues, but only if your dose is insanely high. Now, what happens here is what, as you consume iodine, it goes into the thyroid gland and your thyroid says, hey, there's a lot of substrate here, let's produce thyroid hormone. So you produce a ton of thyroid hormone, it flushes out into the body, you experience hyperthyroidism. This is almost always variable, it usually doesn't last, although there have been reports um, that I've seen of people who use high doses of iodine that then end up with Graves' disease and or Hashimoto's thyroiditis. In fact, there may be somebody, one of you listening right now, who are in that situation. Every time I talk about this, I, there are always people who say, that same thing happened to me. Now, I don't know if that was the direct cause of the iodine supplementation, if it's just related, um, or if it triggered something else in the body, but that can occur. I've seen it many, many, many times, so you should be aware of that. But again, most of the time, once you drop your iodine dose, you'll be fine, you'll be back to normal. 
Then lastly, you can have some issues with th the use of thyroid supplements. Now, I personally sell a lot of thyroid supplements. Mine have never caused hyperthyroidism, um, but I want to use this as an example just to tell you that it can potentially cause problems, especially if you get them from overseas. And the reason is that the regulations over there are not as strict as they are in the United States. So what can happen, and what a lot of people do, is they, they, they actually lace the thyroid supplements with active thyroid hormones. So a lot of these supplements will contain T4 and T3 which is, you know, might make you feel good temporarily, but if you don't account for this when you're also taking thyroid medication, which contains these same ingredients, um, you can actually take too much and then you experience the symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Now, that is not legal in the United States. T3 and T4 are prescription medications and therefore cannot be included in over-the-counter supplements at all, right? If they are in this, they will eventually get found out by the FDA. The FDA will shut them down um, because these are prescription medications. They cannot be found in over-the-counter supplements in the United States. Again, that's not true in other places. So be careful where you're getting your thyroid supplements. If they're produced here, if they're GMP compliant, if they're third-party tested and verified, the chances of them causing any of these issues is, you know, essentially zero. Um, but, you know, there may be some bad actors out there, which is why I haven't said it is zero percent. So be aware of that thyroid supplements, but only if they contain or are laced with the active thyroid hormone can cause hyperthyroidism as well. So in my opinion, these are the, the six most common causes of hyperthyroidism that exist out there right now. The top three really never get missed. The bottom three are, sometimes occur in otherwise healthy and normal people, but are completely reversible and often temporary with the exception of number five, which can potentially turn into Graves' disease or Hashimoto's. Now, if you have any questions about this um, or any of these causes, please let me know. Leave a comment below. I will do my best to answer those questions. Um, and if you haven't already, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information all designed to help thyroid patients like you um, feel better, lose weight, manage your symptoms, get on the right thyroid medication, and so on. So if you haven't already, make sure you check those out. Um, and that's all I have for you guys today. And otherwise, I will see you in the next one.